When garden soil stops supporting healthy plants, it's often because it has lost its humus. Without humus, soil becomes compacted, sterile, and unable to hold moisture or nutrients. But reviving that soil is entirely possible, and it doesn't require synthetic fertilizers or expensive inputs. What it takes is a focused, natural strategy to rebuild humus content from the ground up. This guide walks through exactly how to restore dead soil into a thriving, humus-rich foundation for any garden balcony container, raised bed, or backyard plot. The following steps are practical, affordable, and proven to work. Step 1 is to rehydrate and loosen the soil. Dead soil is usually dry, compacted, and honestly pretty resistant to water. Before anything else, the soil must be loosened and moistened to create a welcoming environment for microbes, roots, and amendments. Start by soaking the soil thoroughly with water over a few days to slowly rehydrate it. Oh, and avoid trying to flood dry soil in one go. It will simply run off the surface. Go ahead and apply water gently with a sprinkler or watering can until it begins to absorb. Once it's moist and pliable, use a digging fork or broad fork, not a rototiller, to aerate the soil 8 to 12 inches deep. This creates space for air, roots, and soil life without destroying existing structure. Step 2. Add fully decomposed compost. Compost is, honestly, the engine of humus creation. Spread a 2-3 to three inch layer of fully decomposed compost over the loosened soil. This compost must be dark, crumbly, and smell earthy, not sour or raw. It can be made at home or purchased from a reliable source. Now, gently mix the compost into the top 6 inches of soil. Be careful not to turn the soil too deeply since that can actually disturb important fungal networks. For small raised beds or containers, you can use compost as a top dressing, especially during the growing season. You'll want to repeat this compost application every three to four months during the first year of soil recovery. With every application, the soil becomes richer, more biologically active, and structurally improved. Step 3. Feed the soil with organic matter inputs. Humus is built through continual inputs of decaying organic matter. In addition to compost, introduce carbon-rich and nitrogen-rich materials that microbes can break down over time. Go ahead and cover the soil with a mix of chopped leaves, straw, grass clippings, or even shredded paper to, you know, mimic nature's mulch layer. This layer actually protects the soil from sun, wind, and rain erosion, while also feeding the microbial life beneath. For small spaces, even kitchen scraps like fruit peels, tea leaves, and crushed eggshells can be trench composted, just buried directly into the soil between crops. As these materials break down, they feed bacteria and fungi that convert organic matter into humus. Step 4. Use green manures and cover crops. During off-seasons or between crops, sowing green manures or cover crops supercharges humus production. These living plants inject carbon into the soil through their roots while suppressing weeds and preventing erosion. Fast-growing options like buckwheat, oats, mustard, or clover are excellent choices. In cooler months, winter rye or hairy vetch continue building biomass and microbial activity underground. Allow these crops to grow for six to eight weeks then chop them down before flowering and leave the plant matter on the surface or dig it lightly into the topsoil. As it decomposes, it adds massive amounts of organic content and feeds the next generation of soil microbes. Step 5. Add humus-boosting natural amendments. Some natural amendments accelerate the humus-building process by improving soil biology and structure. 
These materials work best when combined with compost and mulch strategies. Worm castings are uh, an exceptional amendment full of beneficial microbes, enzymes, and stable humic acids. Apply about half an inch across the top of the soil once or twice a year for maximum effect. Biochar is, you know, another powerful tool. Once it's charged with compost or liquid fertilizer, it becomes a long-term carbon structure that holds nutrients and supports microbial life. So, you'll want to blend it into the soil at a rate of about 5-10% to by volume. For extremely dead soil, aged manure from herbivores like cow, rabbit, or horse can be applied in early spring or fall and uh, worked in lightly. It adds both organic matter and slow-release nutrients, really accelerating the path to humus formation. Step 6 is to protect the soil with continuous cover. You know, soil that's left bare actually loses organic matter really quickly. When the soil is exposed, microbial life dies off, moisture evaporates, and humus breaks down without anything to replace it. So protecting your soil is absolutely essential. It's a good idea to keep your beds mulched year-round using organic materials like shredded bark straw, dried grass, or even chopped leaves. Try to maintain a layer that's at least 2 to 3 inches deep, and remember to replenish it as it breaks down over time. Even in container gardens or, you know, balcony buckets, it's important to maintain a mulch layer. In raised beds, try replacing bare patches with quick-growing greens, or maybe a living mulch like creeping thyme. Over time, this practice alone really helps build soil structure, encourages earthworms, and keeps humus formation active, even when no crops are growing. Step 7 is all about nurturing soil microbial life. You know, humus is actually built by microbes, not by the gardener. Everything from bacteria and fungi to nematodes and protozoa, they all play a part in breaking down organic matter into those stable humic compounds. The real goal here is to create conditions where these tiny organisms can really thrive. It's important to avoid synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, or herbicides since they can disrupt soil biology. These products unfortunately kill the very organisms that transform dead soil into humus-rich earth. Instead, encourage beneficial life through compost teas, diluted fish emulsion, or, you know, homemade ferments like diluted lactobacillus. These natural biostimulants add life, not just nutrients. In compacted soils, mycorrhizal fungi inoculants can also be added near plant roots to re-establish symbiotic relationships that boost nutrient uptake and soil structure. Urban gardens and container setups are ideal for humus-rich soil because conditions can be closely managed. So to get started, use a mix of compost, coconut coir, and either aged manure or worm castings as your base. This combination really helps create a healthy foundation for your plants. Remember to reapply compost every season and uh, make sure to keep your containers mulched. It's a simple step, but it makes a big difference. Oh, and be careful not to overwater. Urban soils are often prone to compaction and runoff, which can really cause problems for your plants. So you'll want to use deep containers or grow bags made with breathable fabric, and remember to water when the top inch feels dry. In raised beds, just follow the same basic rules. Keep the beds packed with organic matter, add compost regularly, and rotate your crops with soil-building varieties like legumes or leafy greens. With consistent inputs and a bit of smart maintenance, even small urban gardens can honestly produce rich living soil that rivals any rural plot out there. Humus building is a process, not a product. There really is no shortcut or miracle product that replaces the slow, steady process of humus formation. But, 
You know, within one to two growing seasons, even the most depleted soil can show dramatic improvement when treated with care and consistency. This process is not only about gardening, it's about restoring ecosystems below the surface. You know, healthy, humus-rich soil actually becomes more resilient with each passing year. It needs fewer inputs, and in return it rewards the gardener with healthier plants, higher yields, and honestly lower costs over time. So just a few final thoughts and a little call to action. If soil is the foundation of every garden, then humus is truly its soul. Building humus-rich soil isn't just about fixing a problem. It's about creating something enduring, sustainable, and life-giving. Whether gardening in a raised bed, container, or backyard plot, the methods outlined here can bring dead soil back to life naturally, affordably, and effectively. For more practical soil revival tips, composting methods, and regenerative gardening ideas, be sure to subscribe to the Hydro Haven YouTube channel. And if this guide helped you, share it with fellow gardeners who are ready to transform their soil and grow with confidence.